Good morning and welcome to anybody who is joining me live this morning and to anybody who is watching this video later because you very sensibly didn't want to get up at the crack of dawn on a Sunday. My name is Arwen from Even Star Wellbeing and I am really so excited to do this first ever virtual circle to celebrate the beautiful Scorpio full moon that gives us the energy to illuminate and to transform. And who doesn't want to do that? So just a little bit of background on me, but before I even do that, I would like to acknowledge the Wadarong people as the first inhabitants and traditional custodians of the land on which I am right now. And I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of any other lands of anyone else who is participating in this circle from wherever they are. I would like to officially open the circle right now and to let you know that um, for me, so I am a healer and a wellbeing practitioner. I work out of Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and also do practice uh, virtually. So offer healing to people uh, in a remote way. And um, have loved doing circles live with people uh, in the western suburbs of Melbourne for the last, uh, I think, nine, nine, or oh, it's actually for nearly a year, um, months. But my partner in crime, who I did those circles with, is currently on maternity leave, the beautiful Vicky from Shine Bright Wellbeing. And so I decided that because I do spread my time over a number of different locations that I would conduct a circle virtually so that um, I can reach potentially more people and it doesn't matter where I am and where you are, but we can all tap into this energy of the full moon. So as far as what we are going to do today, so we're going to, I'm just going to give you a little bit of information to start with, um, important information about the Scorpio full moon and what that really means. And then we are going to do our ritual. And then the last bit of the circle today will be a meditation. When I do these circles live, we do often do that the other way around. So we'll do the meditation first so that things can come up for you and you can then use them in the ritual. So if you feel when you're doing the ritual um, that you perhaps that other things come don't don't or not that every that everything doesn't come up that you think maybe needs to come up you may find that then more comes up for you doing the meditation so feel free to do the ritual again um, the, if you are not watching this video live then I would encourage you to do the ritual definitely before the 23rd of May. And if you can, if you're watching the video some other time today on Sunday the 19th, then doing the ritual tonight is the, the next most full night of the moon's beautiful light. So that's the next best um, other than doing it right now. So we're doing it right now because the full moon is actually at its peak at 7.26 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So it's actually when after the sun has risen, so it's when the moon has already set in, in the uh, Southern Hemisphere. And I just wanted to tap into that most powerful, most potent energy of the moon, although it is a bit of a weird time, I know, to do a full moon circle. But that's the reason, in case you didn't catch that. 
Um, so please do let me know if you are watching live, just put a little comment in to let me know. I'm not going to respond to people um, saying hello, not, not being rude, but I just don't want to keep interrupting the flow of what I'm saying. And um, I would also just say, if you haven't collected the things that you need for the ritual, so that includes your, um, a bowl with some water in it, you also need to uh, have a pen and paper and a candle and something to light the candle with. And also just have a little uh, hand towel or paper towel, something that you can use to dry your hands with as well. So if you haven't get, gotten those things ready, then please um, go and collect them now, just while I'm giving some information about the Scorpio full moon. That's the ideal time to do that. So you're all ready for the ritual in a minute or two. So uh, the moon uh, rises in Scorpio, which is a water sign in the zodiac and is always really a very pregnant, um, with emotion sign and it's often a sign that people are a little bit afraid of because it really is a very deep and inward looking sign which is perfect for the full moon when we always have the opportunity to release and let go with full moon energy. So Scorpio really does represent that dark inner self that we often don't want to actually let the light of the moon shine on. We spend a lot of time, I believe, these days being afraid of showing our own full, true authenticity because of all these expectations of society that are there for us, hammering us 24 hours a day through the media and social media especially, which I know is a bit ironic that I'm doing this circle on social media and at the same time uh, saying that it, it does some rather negative things for us. Um, but I really think that whole compare and despair culture that we have with social media is, is a problem and means that we only feel open to bring out the good bits um, of our lives and of ourselves for everyone to see. So I do think that this Scorpio energy is quite heavy. It's quite daunting for us because it really is forcing us to go inwards and reflect on the things that we don't generally bring out into the open. So it's a great time to think about, well, why? Why am I not bringing, bringing the deep, these deep most parts of me? Why am I not living in a more authentic way, saying more authentic things, doing the things that I really love doing, whatever it is? This is a great time to reflect on that and bring it out into the full moon. So the full moon literally illuminates the, the world in darkness. And it always, as I just mentioned, will give us the support to release, to shine a torch on those deep, dark places that we don't often want to acknowledge and don't want to spend our energy on, and which is understandable. Um, but it allows us to then transform by letting those things go. Transformation involves death and rebirth, which sounds frightening, and it is. We are all a little bit frightened of change, even when that change is for the better. But we must let something die, let something go in order to transform. And the energy of the full moon always supports this. So this is the best time of each month to try and bring change into place and then sow the seeds of that change with a new moon, which occurs roughly two weeks after each full moon. This full moon is especially potent, so not only is it in the sign of Scorpio, but it's also called a seasonal blue moon. And what this means is um, the other blue moon is when there's two moons within a calendar month, but this is actually more potent because the calendar is, is something fairly modern. Um, and the seasonal blue moon is actually 
the fourth blue moon between an equinox and a solstice. And it really just gives the moon a little bit of an extra punch. So a little bit more energy, which does mean you'll feel it more. So if you are someone who is a bit um, sensitive to the moon, as many, many people are, then this one might be even more sensitive inducing. So it, as I said before, it is uh, difficult to change. And because of this extra energy of the seasonal blue moon, it can mean that the transformation that needs to occur may occur very quickly, very suddenly, very fast, which makes it even more difficult to take. It can be quite challenging. So whenever we need to change something, it can be uncomfortable, even when we know it's for our highest good. We really become addicted to doing things that we always do to habits, even when we know that they're not good for us. So it's challenging to let go of that. And it's thinking of it as a sacrifice, as something that you um, need to let go of it's difficult acknowledging it's difficult but making that sacrifice for the sake of the transformation that needs to occur so the warning that i would give with the energy of this month this month's full moon is because it is so strong uh, we want to be careful that we do take the time to reflect to go inwards and illuminate what is inside rather than just letting all that pent up emotion, pent up uh, things that, that we don't normally shine the light on coming out all in like letting the, war, the, the damn wall burst. Uh, that will potentially lead to, you know, us saying things that we don't want to say in a way we don't want to say them, in a time or place we don't want to say them. Um, expressing emotions, I guess, in not the most effective way. So do take this time. Feel like the energy of this full moon is like a big winter doonery. It is heavy. So let it cover you so that you can go inwards, so that you can collect yourself under that doona, do a bit of navel gazing, maybe a bit of defluffing. And then when you're ready to throw that cover off and bring out the new illuminated you for the full moon to shine on the deepest and truest version of you. So just take the time. If you're feeling the energy, go with it and don't be uh, taking yourself out doing things amongst a lot of people that might lead you to blurt things out that you don't want to without thinking. So water is the element of Scorpio, as I said, which is representative of emotion. So water is really important as well at this time. So making sure that you're really hydrated. It's quite chilly here in Victoria. So beautiful, you know, hot drinks, hot um, lemon water or herbal teas if you're not feeling like drinking something cold which is very normal we should follow the seasons with with how we consume our foods perhaps take time to reflect in the bath or in the shower and also if you've got the opportunity to walk and think beside a natural body of water like the sea or a lake or a river then this is the perfect time to to do that you know Imagine yourself walking along the river with that big, heavy winter doona of the Scorpio energy around you. So tapping into that watery energy is perfect with this full moon. All right, so that is all I wanted to say to you about the full moon. And now I would love us to do our ritual. So hopefully you've had the time to collect the things that you needed for the ritual. And uh, what I wanted to say as well is I did mention um, in the event that if you wanted to have crystals or essential oils, then that is entirely up to you, optional. I didn't want people to feel like they have to have them around. Hopefully you've cleansed your crystals last night. So you put them out in the light of the full moon to re-energize them, to cleanse them. If you forgot to do that last night or you couldn't, then tonight is another great night 
to do that. That would be the second best night to do it this month. So if you have those things with you, then by all means, um, just have the crystal near you where you are going to do the ritual, the crystals. I've just got one with me today, my beautiful crystal ball. And um, you may, um, with the essential oils, obviously you can diffuse them. Um, you can put a little drop on your wrists if you want to. We are going to be writing something down on our piece of paper. And another beautiful thing to do is to just put a drop or two on your piece of paper. So it's whatever you want to do with those. Um, for me today, I collected three essential oils. So I've got Litsia marjoram and black pepper and um, the reason that I chose those three is that black pepper is uh, an oil that supports us to unmask, um, unveil. Marjoram is beautiful for connection so I wanted to have that with me to help me connect to all of you in this virtual space and Litsia is a beautiful oil of manifestation. So that's why I chose those three today, just so you know that. Um, you can also put some drops of essential oil in the, um, the water, but don't do that at the moment. You'll find out why in a minute. Okay, so um, what I would like you to do is to repeat after me. So we're going to do a little invocation before we start our ritual. I invite the light into the deepest, most hidden places in my heart. I trust my higher self and the universe to honour the whole of me in creativity. I invite blessings of abundant grounding, flow, balance, love, truth, insight and connection into my life. Okay, so now what I would like you to do is to take your paper and pen and write down on the paper all the things that have come to you whilst I've been talking about this power of the full moon this month that you need to release in order to transform. It could be habits, behaviours, people, Things that you spend your time doing that don't bring you joy. It could be thoughts, ways of thinking. So I will be silent for a moment or two to give you the opportunity to do that and whilst I do that myself as well. As you're writing, make sure that you are breathing really deeply. So starting to bring the breath into you as a source of energy, which we're going to do in our meditation as well. So really slowing the breath, 
really making sure you're bringing it right into your belly as you are writing down all the things that you would like to release to allow you to transform. I am going to put a drop of each of my essential oils onto my paper. As I said, this is completely optional and only if that's something that resonates with you. I had my oils in my diffuser all night last night. Got my really herby marjoram. citrusy, sharp, spicy elixir. And my subtly hot red pepper. When you've finished writing, just fold that paper up and put it aside. So what I would like you to do next, if you can, is pick up your bowl of water. If you can't, if you've got a really big bowl and you can't do that, that's fine. What I would like us to do is to take a sip of water. So if you can't pick up the bowl, you might have a glass of water next to you. If this is just too difficult for you to do for whatever reason, don't worry about this step. So having a sip of your water. My water I left out in the light of the full moon last night so I'm having a sip of moon juice. This is to symbolise cleansing, releasing what is inside of us so allowing that water to really break down what is inside of us. Loosen it. Then what I'd like you to do, having your towel nearby, is to place your hands into the water gently. You're literally washing your hands of the things that you've written down on the paper. My water's really cold, I have to say, having been out overnight, all night last night. Let the drips Come off your fingers as you bring them back out of the water and then drying your hands on your towel. With those beautiful cleansed hands, now with two fingers together, with your right hand touching your fingers to your third eye space, and asking for clear sight. Touching your fingers to your lips to ask for clear authentic voice to come out of your mouth. And touching your fingers to your heart for openness and courage. Taking your piece of paper and you might want to actually fold it quite small. We're going to put, we're going to place our piece of paper into the bowl of water now. And you might need to hold it down a little bit. Once the paper has absorbed some water, then it will stay close to the bottom. Don't worry if it's floating up. It doesn't matter. Once it's really soggy, it's going to float down. Sorry, I shouldn't have said to dry our hands before, should I? That was a bit silly. Okay. 
So moving that bowl out of your way now. I'm going to put some notes in the event about what to do with this bowl of water because our next step is going to be to do a meditation. When I'm finished the meditation, I'm not going to say anything. I will end the video then. Um, and I will put some, some more information into the event after that. If you have any questions at all, then please feel free to put your questions into the event or feel free to send me a private message. Please do take the time to like the Evan Star Wellbeing page if you haven't done that yet. And I hope to bring you more of these events in the future. So for our meditation, please make sure that you are comfortable. It's always best to meditate sitting up. But if you wish to lie down, that's entirely up to you. So resting your hands lightly, palms up on your knees or wherever is appropriate, depending on what position you're in. And before we start our meditation, actually, I do apologize. I should have said this before as well. We're going to light our candle. So when we light a candle, we're setting an intention and we are bringing the universe's attention to our intention with that light. So we would like to light a candle now to signify our intention that we would like illumination on the best path forward to allow us to release the things that we wrote on our piece of paper. So if you would like to now take your candle and light it. I've got a beautiful beeswax candle here. And then resting your hands slightly, palms up. Place your attention on your breath. Really slowing it down. Feeling that breath travel through your body. When you inhale, making sure you're feeling your belly expand with the inhalation. So you know that breath is not just staying in your chest. We need to take it right down into the belly to activate our vagus nerve, which switches on our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the part of our nervous system that tells us to relax that now is the time to rest and digest. This is something that you can do anywhere, anytime, is really deepen your breath, getting it right into the belly. So slowing the breath down, if you need to count to help you do that, and try and make sure that each breath goes for at least four counts. Making sure that we really let go of everything with the breath as well. So making your exhalation even longer. Feeling the breath visualizing it as energy traveling through your body. Visualize your inhalation coming in at your root chakra, right at the bottom of your spine, traveling up 
three or torso with each breath. That energy of the breath lights up each of your chakras. Especially feeling that energy in your heart space. We need to open the heart to allow connection with each other, with the universe, to allow for illumination. So really feeling your breath in the heart space now. Crystallize all of your attention in the heart space. Notice it. Feel if there's any congestion or blocks or if blood and energy freely flow through your heart. See your heart as a gigantic rose filled with layers of velvet pink petals See the petals multiply and extend out even further. Use your imagination, your beautiful creative mind to see yourself as a bumblebee looking at the gorgeous rose of your heart with delight, with absolute gratitude, seeing all its sweetness. Feeling that gratitude grow. Feeling your heart expand with gratitude. That beautiful sensation of, of bubbling, of, of warmth, of joy in your heart. See the petals of your heart multiply and extend out even further. See yourself, the bee, travelling through all the multiple layers of petals, feeling the gentle texture of them as you pass through them and inhaling that beautiful sweet smell of the rose of your heart. Eventually, you funnel into the core of your heart where it is very quiet. The space feels expansive and vast. You have a great overwhelming sense of belonging. It feels like home and you lie down to rest. Breathing in deeply, you sink into this beautiful space. You realise that you've not been there in a long time. From the stillness, heart energy calls you to help create flowing smoothness and softness throughout the structure of the heart. Throughout the whole of you. You spiral through the rose, collecting anything that's blocking its energy, any debris, any stagnation. At the end of your journey, this cleansing journey, you have accumulated many blocks, old memories, hurts, emotions, losses and traumas. You bundle them up and fly high up to the sky to release them. 
they float back down to the rose, but as they do, they begin to transform, transmuted into positive energy again, nourishing drops of water that sprinkle the rose petals. The rose extends its petals further with love for the water. The water winds its way into and out of the rose, bringing it the life force it needs and then moving on. The shower of pure water continues, cleansing the rose petals, creating a flow to purify and clear the heart from everything. At last, the rose is clean, clear and pure and able to extend its petals to all life in healthy giving and receiving. The heart takes in only that which is it for its highest good and extends in service only to the limit that feels comfortable. The rose fills with compassion and love and gratitude. The bee watch over, watches over the rose to ensure that it's always protected from harm. Breathing into your heart space. Visualizing the beautiful green glow of heart energy expanding into the cosmos, infinitely growing bigger, allowing whatever needs to be released from the heart space to be released, allowing love to come into it Everything starts with self-love. With your next breath, you are reborn into a new expansive space, your perfect time and place within all the infinite possibilities of the cosmos. Now place your hands over your heart and repeat, the past is gone. Now, all that I am is an entire universe. Now, there is no part of me that is wrong. Now, I accept all of me including those things I perceive as imperfect. Now I am ready for rebirth. My heart is whole. Now I am reborn. I have arrived fully into my heart. Now I am enough. I am home. And so it is. Go forth, transform beautiful butterflies. Namaste.